Hello, Hateless Gaming here, uh, bringing you a guide on capacitor. Uh, the idea of this video is that I want you to be able to adjust a fit or change a fit uh, that you guys uh, have now, uh, and you want to add capacitor or uh, optimize a fit in a way. Uh, this is how you could get more capacitor out of your ship. This is how you can make your, your ship more efficient in whatever you're doing, and without needing additional help you can be like okay this fit i want to change it and i want to get more cap this is how you can do it and you'll have the tool in your arsenal to be able to adjust a fit or change a fit to your need uh, and understanding um what modules are best where you can do it and where you can't and then also what skills you should train and stuff like that so uh without further ado we're gonna get right into it um the idea is that you guys are, will understand how the capacitor works uh, after uh, watching this video as well. So it's an educational thing. Uh, we're gonna start with the, uh, the super basic uh, and that is how cap recharge is calculated and how we uh, figure out how much cap recharge we have. And then um, when cap is at its strongest, I guess, on your ship. Uh, so you guys can uh, understand that a little bit better. It's kind of funny, so I'm just going to take a moment to talk about this. She left me alone all afternoon while I was doing homework and research into this video. And the second that I hit that record button, she knows it. She's like, hey, you're talking. I'm just going to come bug you. So this is why the cat's always in the video, because as soon as I start talking... She knows that I'll give her some some kind of attention. But this is Nika. She's the one that always appears in the video or talking in stations. Uh, I thought I'd introduce her, uh, her to YouTube. Uh, if you guys like Nika, make sure you leave a comment and say hi, Nika. And uh, I'll make sure to give a heart to everybody that says hi, Nika in the comments. Uh, but let's carry on. Uh, to start here, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at my main. Uh, I have a random ship pulled up. It's not that random. It's actually something I was working on a little bit in the last stream. And that kind of got my gears turning to want to make this video. Um, we want to know how strong our capacitor is. And we can look at the info panel here. Uh, in the capacitor tab, we get some numbers here. We get a, a negative uh, 13 and then minus X percent. Uh, this percentage is how many times more of the cap that your ship is capable of using that you're using, if that makes sense. So say your ship makes 50 cap and you're using 100 cap per second, it would be minus 100%. Uh, if your ship was using uh, 25 cap, it'd be plus 100%. Uh, and it, that's kind of how it works. If, if, if you're using less, you have a positive percent. If you're using more than what you generate, you have a negative percent. Um, and then the other number, uh, this minus amount, there's a little uh, triangle here uh, that is your cap, it stands for cap delta. And it, it says that we are currently minus 13.3 gigajoules a second, which is how many units of cap that we are over on cap stability. And then it gives us our cap amount and the recharge time for our cap amount. Uh, this, all these are important numbers for different reasons. But what you primarily want to pay attention to is this one here. And then sometimes when we're talking about abyss, if you're going into an electrical abyss, negative 100 or greater. So this is less than negative 100 or negative 128. But negative 100 or greater, so negative 99 or any two-digit negative number, you will be cap stable inside of an electrical. Uh, and that's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, electricals are weird. You get uh, double cap recharge. So you end up with twice the cap as before. Sorry, that's the ship from the last video. Um, Nika is making this difficult. Anyways, uh, let's go into how these numbers correlate with each other uh, and how when we modify one number, uh, it will affect our cap as we go forward. So if we whip out the amazing calculator here, I know you guys all love doing math. Uh, you don't have to. This is just an example to show you guys how it works. Uh, but to figure out what our peak regen is, or how, how much capacitor we generate, we would take our capacitor amount, 1, 5, 2, 0, and then we would divide it by the cap recharge. So we go divided by 
367.5, 367.5, and the recharge time is in seconds. And um, this is how long it takes your capacitor to recharge. Uh, we end up with 4.136. So we have a cap gain on this ship of 4.136. And we can verify that by making sure all of our modules are offline in the simulating window here. And I must have done the numbers wrong or missed the number. Uh, we're going to try that one more time. We're going to go 1520. We're going to divide by 365.5. Divide 36. Sorry, it's 367.5. We got 4.136, and I'm forgetting a step. Uh, peak cap region is double the average. So, or uh, 2.5 times the average. So we multiply this number. Nika, I need you to not do this. Um, so we multiply by 2.5. And that will give us peak regen, which is very close to, it, it, it's never gonna be exact, but peak regen is about that. And then where you have the most regeneration, where you actually have 2.4 gigabyte or gigajoules per second, is right around 25 to 27% cap. Um, and then that is uh, shown here in this graph, uh, which I'll have a link to it. This is found off the eWiki page. Uh, but basically this is the graph at how quickly your cap regenerates. So uh, this is time over, so this is for a uh, capacitor, uh, uh, specific ship, but this is the time and seconds that it takes for it to regenerate. And this is the capacitor percent that you'll have. As you can see, it goes up um, and then the uh, percentage of the the cap that you have versus the uh, cap regen percent, the peak is right around here uh, between 25, so between 20 and 30 percent is where you regenerate the most capacitor. So once your cap, a, a lot like a passive shield tank, once your cap is below about 25 percent it's going to decrease or reduce in performance significantly. And as it approaches 100, it's going to reduce in performance and regeneration significantly, peaking at around 2.5 times uh, for peak regen. And that's where we get that number from. And that's how we uh, understand it. Uh, so that's kind of how cap works. So if you can keep your capacitor above 25% uh, by turning off modules and modulating things, you can get a lot more out of your ship, if that makes sense. Um, so for example, if we turn on the micro warp drive, it uses quite a bit of capacitor. So it looks like it. we have 10.4 and we're minus 3.5. So it uses about 15 gigajoules a second uh, is about what that means, uh, which is a lot of cap uh, on something that only makes 10. So we wouldn't be able to run this indefinitely. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do. Uh, we'll go over skills first. Uh, the first skill that we have uh, for dealing with cap is our capacitor systems operation, uh, which is this one here. And this will give you 5% re uh, reduction in recharge time per skill level uh, at level five. This is a 25% increase in how quickly your, your capacitor recharges. And this affects every single ship in the game. And then the other one is capacitor management. And this will give you a 5% uh, to the capacitor amount. Remember, both of these do affect how much your cap recharges per second uh, because they're two parts of the equation that give you that number. Uh, but this increases your capacitor amount by 5% per skill level, uh, giving you another 25%. So these multiplied together end up being a little bit greater than 50% stronger capacitor when you have them trained. So a untrained pilot versus a trained pilot has a significantly stronger cap. Uh, there's a lot of module related ones and I'll touch on that towards the end of the video. I want the dense and important information to be in the front. Um, and then the more kind of obscure information to be in the back on this video. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, not worry so much about skills uh, anymore because it's or until the end of the video. But those are the main two skills that will affect your cap the most. And we'll get into other skills as uh, we get through the video. Uh, next, I want to talk about modules that you can fit to your ship to increase your uh, cap regen or make it so that you regenerate cap faster. Uh, the first of which will be a cap battery. Um, the bigger the battery, the more the gain is, obviously. And there's four different sizes, or there's five different sizes. I believe there's extra large batteries, too. 
possibly, uh, because I do have, yeah, there's capital batteries. Uh, but if you put a cap battery on your ship, it significantly increases or increases by a, quite a bit how much uh, capacitor you have. As you can tell, we're going from 15 to 31, uh, which increases our cap amount by quite a bit. Uh, so it in increases this half of the equation, uh, making our cap regen significantly more. So that's a cap battery. Uh, the next mid-slot module that you can fit is a uh, cap recharger. Uh, so we have capacitor rechargers, and those affect the other half of the equation uh, to reduce the recharge time, and they actually multiply really well with batteries. So if you put a, a battery and a... Uh, actually, I did a medium uh, battery there, and I showed you guys a large a second ago. Uh, but if we put a large battery and a cap recharger, they actually multiply together because we're now increasing both sides of the equation. Uh, and that's important to note. Uh, those are the two medium slot modules that you can fit. Also, one side note on cap batteries is they have an additional stat that's really important. Uh, they give capacitor warfare resistance bonus uh, of negative 25%. That means if you're nuded 100 gigajoules, you now only take 75 gigajoules of uh, new pressure. It's a lot like adding a hardener to your, uh, to your tank and mitigating the damage. And it works in much the same way. Um, so that's cap batteries and cap rechargers. And then we have a few options for low slots as well. Uh, in low slots, we have uh, capacitor flux coils, which are really interesting modules. Um, I generally use these on shield tanks uh, rather than armor tanks because uh, they do increase your cap recharge uh, by more than they increase your capacitor uh, amount. So they'll hurt your cap amount but increase your cap recharge, but it will net you a gain in cap per second, but it'll make... If you have, uh, if you get nuded or if you're dealing with E-War, it makes it more difficult to deal with the E-War, but it does give you overall more cap. So you end up with 27, or actually we'll unfit this. So our um, our 10.4 goes up by about 30% overall, but we do lose uh, the bank a little bit. Uh, so also if you're trying to last for a while and you're not trying to go cap stable, but if you're in a fight that lasts like two minutes, you're trying to make your ship last longer. If it's not stable, it will generally reduce uh, the amount of time that you are stable at the same time as, um, let's turn this on and make us not stable so I can show you guys what I mean here. But even though we have more cap, we probably don't have the cap running quite as long. Actually, it added 30 seconds. But in some cases, it, it'll reduce the amount of time that you can run everything on your ship because your, uh, your, your battery is only so big. Uh, and if you run out of battery, well, you're, you're, you're out. But this makes it regenerate quicker. So if you're in that sweet spot, you benefit quite a bit. Uh, the next module uh, that we have in mind is the cap power relays. And like I said, I like the flex coils with shield tanks. And I like the relays with armor tanks uh, because the cap power relay uh, has the same effect. It's not quite as strong, uh, but it has a capacitor recharge bonus, uh, not quite as strong as a flex coil. Uh, but instead of reducing the amount of capacitor you have, it reduces the amount that you can shield boost. So it's really bad for shield tanks, but it's really good for armor tanks that don't have a shield booster. So you can get additional cap in that method as well. Um, but if you're a shield tank, this is different. But basically, they have the same net effect. We have 13.6 here, and when we had the flux coil of the same tier, uh, we ended up with 13.6 as well. Uh, so they, they have the same end result. It's just the way they get there is a little bit different. Uh, and they're both low slot modules that increase your cap. Uh, there's a third low slot module, which is a little weird. Um, and it's also a, a module for tanking. But it is the uh, power diagnostic systems. Uh, literally give you additional power grid, additional capacitor, reduced cap recharge time, additional shields, and reduced shield recharge time. These are awesome on passive tanks uh, and or passive shield tanks. And they are awesome on when you need a little bit of cap and you could also use power grid or when you need a little bit of power grid and you could also use cap or, or any variation of that. Or you need a little bit more cap uh, shield recharge to hit the quota for your passive shield tank, uh, whatever you're building. But they're they're a really neat system that uh, when you don't quite need the extreme of a flux coil, uh, but you could also use the power grid or something. They, they, they end up fitting really well into a lot of fits. So it's a, a module type worth mentioning. 
Uh, so that's for mids and lows. Uh, there's a couple high or a few rigs uh, that I want to mention in the first half, and there's a bunch of rigs in the back half that we're going to mention too. So if you watch the entire video, you'll get that. Uh, but for rigs, we have two main engineering rigs uh, that will increase uh, cap recharge, and they are the capacitor control circuit. We'll look at both the tier two here. So we got a capacitor control circuit, and we have the semiconductor memory cell. Uh, they both increase by 20%, uh, their side of the equation. The memory cell increases your capacitor capacity by 20%, and the capacitor control circuit increases the recharge by 20%. Normally, the semiconductor memory cell will give a little bit less cap per second. So we have 12.9 on the uh, on the capacitor control circuit. And then we have 11.9 on the memory cell, but the memory cell buys you more time overall. Again, if you're not looking for cap stable, but you're looking for an extension and the uh, a bigger bank of battery or a bigger bank of cap, then uh, a memory cell would serve you better. Whereas if you're looking for raw output, the uh, capacitor um, control circuit will serve you a lot better. Uh, so it, 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 again, depending on your needs, you know, whether you want a battery or a recharger or a cat battery or a recharger in the mids, the uh, rigs have a similar kind of offset there. Um, that's really it for modules. Uh, there are EWAR modules that increase cap and decrease cap. So if we go into back into engineering modules here, uh, there's a capacitor NOS, NOS of true, or a NOS. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how to spell it, uh, but they work by stealing cap from your enemy. Uh, so what this will do is it'll steal 36 points of cap every five seconds from my opponent. There are a couple butts. You have to have less total capacitor than your opponent. So if they have a bigger battery than you, you're probably going to be able to draw cap off of them. If they have a smaller battery than you, or their percentage is really low, then you are less likely to be able to draw a cap off of them. Uh, so sometimes you can draw off NPCs when they have large banks of capacitor remaining on them. Sorry, my cat's sitting on my stream deck. Uh, and sometimes you can't. Uh, and there's a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, when you're fitting a Nos of Churro, uh, it's a leech off your opponent. And as long as they have a large enough battery for you to draw off, uh, you can draw off of them. Uh, and that's a really big but. And then there's a uh, logistics module in the engineering equipment called a remote capacitor transmitter. Uh, these are the high module slots. Uh, and remote cap transfers work in really awesome, interesting ways. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. Uh, basically what they do is if we show info um, without skills. I want to show info here. Uh, Generally, they cost more than the amount that they send. So 120, so it costs 122 to send out 117 cap. But there's a skill that you can train uh, called. Well, I gotta look at it really quick. There's a skill you can train called shield emission systems or capacitor emission systems. And it will reduce that cost by 5%. So if you buddy up with somebody uh, and you send cap with somebody and you guys both have the skill trained up, now instead of sending, instead of costing 122, it costs me 91.5 to send 117. So we wisp, I think that's like 15 cap out of thin air. Uh, and that's a really cool way to generate cap if you have a buddy. Uh, and then there's one more module that I'm forgetting. Uh, and this module is used quite often. It's a capacitor booster. Uh, you almost always want to use the FRX. Uh, there are f very few reasons why would you would use the faction or the meta, but you almost always use the FRX because of fitting. Uh, it's, it's my default. Sometimes you use tier two when you're using a weird cap ba battery or cap booster setup. Uh, but these you load up with charges and the charges give you cap directly. Uh, and then they boost every, um, it's like 12 seconds and then they have to reload. So the reload time is a big factor. But if you throw a, uh, a, a cap booster into a, a into a ship, suddenly we're plus a lot of cap because we get 800 gigajoules every 12 seconds and then we reload and throw another one. We're like super cap stable with a cap booster. Um, the downside to this is that you run ammo. Um, and then it's really important to note that there, 
that a regular cap booster and a navy cap booster do the exact same thing uh the navy cap booster 800 and cap booster 800 both give you 800 cap however when you're trying to fit a bunch of them in a module so say we're trying to fit uh or trying to put them in your ship the navy cap boosters are about half as big as the fa as the standard cap boosters so if we run navy cap booster 900s we can fit 10 of them in this i think i put 100s in there and if we put navy cap booster 100s we'll only be able to fit eight in this ship i guess it's not always half but the um the, the volume is significantly smaller for the navy than the standard and it's important to in most cases you would want to use the navy variant over the standard because you can fit more of them in your cargo and you can fit more of them in the booster and you can even fit a larger booster uh in some cases or a larger um actual booster than you could fit in the standard one so sometimes in a frigate size one a small one you'd fit a 400 or you can fit a 400 cap booster uh, whereas you can't fit a 400 Navy cap booster, if that makes sense. So you want to make sure that you can fit the mod, fit the booster, and then the, the Navy ones use up less volume. So they generally fit better in your cargo and in the module. That's an important thing when using a cap booster. I don't use these a lot because I'm a PvE player, uh, but there are situations where they are incredibly fantastic, uh, especially in PvP situations. Carrying a few cap boosters does a lot of good. Um... Anyways, uh, we are off to talk about implants. Uh, we'll go over the basic ones. So if we hit Alt-R, we can look at the market here. And there's a few implants that you can get uh, that are... If, if there's a skill that affects your capacitor, there's likely an implant that is equivalent in uh, 1 through 6%. So if we go into implants and boosters we can check out uh, skill hardwiring. And in a lot of tabs, there's something that reduces capacitor, but the main one is slot six has capacitor systems operation and decreasing your recharge time. And slot eight has capacitor management, increasing the amount of cap you have. Generally, I run a 5% uh, cap uh, seven or uh, 805. Uh, slot 805 for cap because slot 8 isn't used in a lot of things and it's universally helpful for my PVE activities. So I tend to run this implant a lot and slot 6 is uh, the Omega implant for various things. Um, and then there's also for capacitor usage there are Omega uh, sets. Uh, the genulation set will increase your capacitor among other things. And then there is now also a Rapture set uh, that will increase uh, your capacitor as well. Uh, I don't know, I have the exact percentage on cap recharge time total for the high grade set. I believe it's 37.5% increased cap recharge time, which is a really big deal on the amount of capacitor that you can get on a ship. Um, and then we have one more thing to keep in mind, and that is that there is a booster that increases your cap recharge time or it's, it's cap amount, and it's mine flood in slot one uh, can increase your cap amount by a flat percentage. However, the side effects can be really bad depending on your uh, draw, and you could also get a uh, hit to your shield boost or repair amount, basically negating the booster effect for active tanks. But this booster can be incredibly useful for Logi, uh, as none of these uh, hits affect Logi. So they're incredibly helpful on Logi ships. I carry them in my nesters all the time for invasions. Um, and that's the implants. So now we're going to get into the, the, the kind of more obscure things that can help your, uh, your capacitor out. Um, actually, I'm going to give you guys a couple tips uh, before we do that, uh, before we get into the obscure stuff. Uh, the first tip is upgrading a module uh, to a uh, dead space type or a faction type will sometimes yield a better cap usage. And a really good example of that is the micro warp drive, where the standard micro warp drive will give you a negative 25% capacitor bonus, 
upgrading the quality of your micro warp drive will significantly reduce that cap penalty and increase the overall capacity of your ship. Um, and then also you don't always have to have everything on at once. And so sometimes even if a ship isn't cap stable, uh, it runs just fine for the purpose because you can turn some modules off and not have to run everything. But um, I just wanted to mention in this video that cap stability is overrated. Uh, and the fit that I'm currently working on is, uh, is actually exit simulation is this. And actually, it's not this. Uh, the fit that I'm currently working on uh, does utilize this fact very... Um, very blatantly. Uh, in that we can see that it's not cap stable at all. Uh, and we're trying to uh, figure out a way without re increasing the cost too much to increase its ability to, to tank. And it doesn't need to run everything at once. It's obviously not cap stable, but if the micro warp drives on, the guns can be off. So we would offline the guns. And then we're trying to make it so that it can run this repper more, uh, the second repper, so that it it, it it is it feels better. And one of the small changes that we can do is with this on, we're minus 13 one, uh, but we have a small optimization that we can make. I've been running three cap rechargers. I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna go ahead and put on a battery instead because increasing this side has a bigger impact than increasing this size in this case. So we go engineering equipment and get a booster on here or a, a cap battery. Um, we have a slightly stronger cap than we did before. We have 13.2 instead of the, uh, I think it was seven or, or four, which means that running the uh, second wrapper is a lot easier on the fit. Uh, so it's just kind of like one of those things where we're adjusting and tailoring the fit for our needs just a little bit more and tweaking it so that it runs a little bit better. Uh, we could alternatively upgrade this micro warp drive and give us uh, even more cap by taking the micro warp drive, but this increases cost. If we go propulsion, micro warp drive, and we get a uh, higher quality micro warp drive, uh, we could go with a, uh, we would need a 50 MN, I want the faster one, or the Corellium will work. Uh, but if we use a higher quality micro warp drive, so for 83 million ISK, we don't really lose speed, but we gain a lot of cap, not because the micro warp drive uses less cap, but because it only nukes our cap by 7% instead of 25%, giving us an incredibly stronger cap. This alone actually makes us cap stable, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, so that change alone might be what it take, what I want to do to this ship, rather than trying to adjust everything and rebuild the ship from scratch. Um, so that's kind of like a tip. You, you don't necessarily need cap stability because sometimes you're not using a module 100% of the time. And then when the uh when the micro warp drives off we're using the guns in this fit so with these online we're cap stable running that with both reppers this would change the fit to make it completely cap stable without adding much more cost uh, but this is just a, a random example of something that i'm currently working on and i'm assessing different options and costs and uh, i'm working on updating a burner guide uh, but uh, let's get into some of the more obscure skills I'm just gonna read them off really quickly. Um, but a lot of modules use capacitor. And uh, if you're using that module, you wanna check on required skills for that module to see if there is a skill associated with that module that reduces cap unit usage. Uh, the big one, or the ones I went to the eVUNI page and I, uh, I'm just gonna rattle them off real quick. So module related capacitor management skills are controlled bursts for guns, fuel conservation, makes it easier to use afterburners. High speed maneuvering makes it easier to use the micro warp drive. Uh, propulsion jamming uh, makes it easier to use scramblers and disruptors. Shield compensation makes shield boosters use less cap uh, ca capacitor. Jump drive operation uh, is uh, reduces the uh, amount of cap required to initiate a jump for you capital pilots. Uh, Logi related Capacitor skills are capacitor emission systems. We mentioned that when we we're talking about cap transfers. Uh, capacitor emission systems is a really important skill. Remote armor repair systems will reduce the capacitor need for remote armor reps. Shield emission systems reduces the capacitor requirement for remote shield boosters and remote hole repair systems also reduces the capacitor requirements for 
uh, using remote hole wrappers, which is incredibly rare. Um, and then EWAR related capacitor management modules are, are, uh, are skills that are associated with modules. Electronic warfare uh, reduces the cap need for ECM jammers and ECM bursts. Sensor linking reduces the capacitor need for remote sensor boosters. Target painting uh, reduces the capacitor need for target painters. Weapon disruption reduces the capacitor need for tracking disruptors. Um, and then um, there's a few rigs that also have the same effect. The dynamic fuel valve uh, reduces the cap use of prop mods, afterburners, and micro warp drives. Warp core optimizers reduce the capacitor need for initiating warp. There's a weird thing to put on your ship. Uh, because it doesn't help you in combat in any way, but only when you're navigating around. That would be interesting, finding an actual legitimate use for a warp core optimizer, because most ships can run their warp drive without a problem. Uh, signal, signal disruption amplifier. The rig will reduce the capacitor need for ECM modules. Core defense capacitor safeguard will reduce, reduce the capacitor need for running a shield booster. Discharge utriation rigs exist for both uh, hybrids and energy weapons. Reduces the turret uh, capacitor usage, which is a big deal on some ships. Um, and that is the more obscure ones. There's a whole list of implants that have similar effects to those rigs and those skills. Um, and I feel like that's a pretty thorough one. Uh, I'm going to just check through my notes real quick and see what, uh, make sure that we have touched on everything uh, that people wanted me to. Uh, increasing quality of modules is a really strong way or really good way to decrease cap usage or increase the efficiency of the cap that you're using. If you use a dead space wrapper that uses the same amount of cap as a T2 wrapper, it's easier on cap per HP. So the more HP that you uh, rep per cap spent, uh, your efficiency goes up, meaning that you get more out of the cap that you have. And um, so I'm going to add this little blurb in. Uh, it, I did forget to mention it. Um, if you have, if you wanted to do some more digging on the math that the uh, that the capacitors use to regenerate, or if you want more information on capacitor use, uh, I did heavily lean on the Eve Wiki guide on capacitor for um, for uh, having all the information in one place for me to be able to. Uh, Kind of report on and, and explain to you guys. Uh, I will include a link in the description for the Eve Uni Capacitor webpage. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can go check that out and read that. And then there's a, also one other thing that affects capacitor is uh, for various ships uh, in Eve Online. Uh, when you're building your ship, you generally tailor uh, the ship to the job. When you pick the ship, uh, sometimes you'll notice in the information tab. I don't have an example on hand, uh, but sometimes there is a bonus to the amount of capacitor a ship has based on skill levels. So that's another factor. So sometimes the spaceship command will increase the capacitor of the ship as well. And then I think that's it. I think that is a, at least as complete as I can guide on cap and how it functions in the game and things you can do. Uh, if you have anything that I missed, make sure you put it in the comments and or uh, if you like this video, make sure you like it and subscribe for more content in the future. Um, I think that's pretty much a wrap. Um, yeah, fly fun and enjoy your time in EVE Online, guys. I'll be seeing you guys in the next one.